it's January 23rd, 2023. It's like 12.15 p.m. I'm running errands. Uh, I haven't recorded any videos in a little bit. I tried to make a longer video, but it's gonna be a little bit more in depth, but I figured I should get something, should something down while I was traveling, traveling around. That product placement here. America runs on Duncan. It's the hard, like, it's the hard, dirty water. Overpriced, dirty water. With seed oil in it. It processed you. <laughs> oh. Ah, so. I was on Twitter talking to some people and. I, I like, you know, honestly, on Twitter, I can say this. Diversity is our strength. From sea to shining sea, I want you to know that diversity is our strength. So on X, straight edge X, diversity truly is a strength. I like the fact that I can talk to multiple people, multiple countries, multiple genders with multiple ideas with multiple IQs and understanding of concepts I even like the fact that sometimes people are trolling you not having you you have part of life is learning learning when somebody's wasting your time and moving forward but also having fun wasting other people's time and not moving forward so There's, there's quite a bit of a buzz going on between Owen Benjamin and some of the Libertarians and some of the ANCAPs. And, and I think that many individuals have some difficulty understanding Owen Benjamin's point of view because he dances so very well in between comedy and reality being hyperbolic and serious with you know, historical data and just having fun and making an entertainment while trying to get a message message across. But I do think he understands um, I think he understands the engineering of the world in a non-autistic way, unlike a lot of ANCAPs that are principled. And I don't have much time. I'm on my way to go grocery shopping, so I just want to break it down really quick. When you study physics, you get very finite examples. You know, E equals MC squared. Or something like 9.8 meters per second squared is, is a gravitational pull. And when you study these You know these little one-inch equations that have been created over time it's it, it, it's similar to a principle you know when we talk philosophy a core principle those mathematical equations have been validated and when you get a core principle it needs to be validated such that the argument that you're making Has no, has no contradictory in it. Same thing with the math equation. So I think the difficulty for many ANCAPs um, is anarcho-capitalists, for those who understand, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't even want to say extreme, it's just a principled mindset, it's a core principle of libertarianism that uh, with the non-aggression principle that initiation of force is always immoral and the only moral use of force is in self-defense now you can get into the weeds and try and figure out you know when is self-defense because if you can wait to get shot in the head to self-defend yourself then what use is self-defense so you know, and then what percentage of self-defense can you go after somebody like if they're about they're in the crane position and they're about to crane kick you 
you know, when can you self-defend? Reminds me of that like Indiana Jones scene that was supposedly a mistake where Harrison Ford is just tired after a long day and the guy come after and does this big choreographed knife thing and he just pulls his gun out and shoots the guy dead. But I digress. So I've been saying this for quite some time and getting in arguments with people. But the idea of Ancapistan, it's not a utopic place. So principles exist now. Christians are not saying I cannot be Christian and I cannot live my morals, values, and ethics until everybody's Christian and that we abolish Judaism and, and all this stuff. They live it now. And physicists are still figuring out, even though they don't have a perfect vacuum, they're still using physics in the real world. It's called engineering. So when they build the bridge, they use these equations as their principles, but then they plug in the data from the real world into the equation so that they can get data spit out to them. So once you recognize that anarchy is now, it's not a futuristic utopia, that anarchy is now, and that most of society is going to initiate the use of force and that's an immoral stance then you could start living your life in a manner with inside that equation for example I'm vegan and people are like oh you kill bugs and it's like when you drive your car it's like okay well I only use the term vegan because you need a jump off point but I extend the non-aggression principle to all life to the best of my ability in order for, but also I have to survive within that equation and I'm within a cage where there's other people not participating so I do my best so I have more in common with a rancher who allows his cattle to be free or maybe Ted Nugent would be a better example. I have more in common with Ted Nugent who has a ranch whose deer mate with one another and then he kills some of the deer that are destroying the land to eat. Then I do with most vegans that are going to the supermarket or with omnivore meat eaters that are like, well, we we were designed to do this. That's why I go to the store and I get a bunch of meat injected with hormones that have been fed chemicals from the U.S. government that have been enslaved. It's like you're not you're not living your principles and values and stuff. You you've become a meat memer. Now, if I got myself in a situation where I'm working towards to get into more of a remote area. I do think I can have a symbiotic relationship with chickens, goats, and animals that would be healthy and beneficial to both of us. And this does not go against the, the Bible necessarily because it talks of a time where the lion and the lamb shall lay together. But I digress because I'm not a Christian either. So if you live your life and your values now to the best of your ability as an anarchist because you've, you've designed these principles and morals where you're trying to figure out morality and square some uh, square some current circles and, and, and figure out the solutions and how to live in this you might not be able to live perfectly but when you're encaged or when people are using a bunch of force to, to point you in a particular direction, it's understandable that you have to defend yourself. And sometimes the defense is not pulling a trigger and a gun, but it's, you know, like in a street fight, sometimes your best self-defense is to run and avoid. Or if, a, or if you're a multimillionaire and you're on the street and a crackhead comes up to you with a knife and it says and he says give me give me all the money in your give me all the money in your pocket this asian crackhead that's his voice that's her voice actually don't assume her gender don't assume her gender she said come on now look at me here 
give me all your, the station crack it. She's like, oh, come on, darling. Give me all that money up in your pockets. And you reach in. Are you going to, are you going to get stabbed over 20 bucks when you have a million bucks? Or are you going to pay the 20 bucks and get on with your life? Or are you going to risk shooting the crackhead in the head and then have to give evidence and go through a, 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 a bunch of other evil people that don't understand principles? With You don't want a jury of your peers. Because you don't actually get a jury of your peers. If you have 145 IQ and you commit what they consider a crime, even though it doesn't get, go against the actual laws of physics, it just breaks the rules created by the rulers, you're going to get a bunch of people with 90 IQs that don't have a job that want $15 an hour for going to jury duty to make a decision. So give the $20. Give the $20 and get on with your life. All right? So this is similar to, you know, if you're living a life of value and you're making money and you're intelligent enough to move money around, then when you have to pay a percentage of that back to the government, one, you should have been figuring out tax shelters and stuff. Two, you should have been figuring out alternative currencies. Three, you should be running a business to have all sorts of write-offs and playing the game with them. Fighting them is not going to be worth the time in the end. You're fighting evil. So I don't want to get into the fact that taxation is technically not theft. It would be theft if if they own the fiat currency. It doesn't. It's just paper. So they're asking for a percentage of their slave currency back. Now, if they were taking gold from you, part of your... It represents part of your land, so yes. So like within the system of slavery or taking a part of somebody's productivity is, is theft. But fiat currency is their property. Their property being the banks and the banks being the overlords to all the human cattle farming, but that's just a bigger, bigger, huge story. So let me just pull this back a little bit because I got to go in the shop and... Anarchies now, I want you to go out if you're an anarchist or a libertarian. I mean, the Democrats do it. They're awful warmongering murderers, child murderers. And they want to do that right now. They're not waiting for the future. <laughs> All right? So if you... So you should be living anarchy now to the best of your ability. And there's different ways you can do that. Like, for instance, if you really like firearms, you should move to New Hampshire. Now, you can stay in a place like California and have your firearms and stuff. But you got to worry about evil people. And if they want to come take it, they'll take it, I guess. Any which way. If you prefer your drugs, you might want to go to a drug area where they're not going to worry about it. But you it's all it's all pros and cons, costs and benefits. Anarchy is now. I'll get into this in a bigger video. I just wanted to get something. I might delete this. Maybe it's not even worth putting up there. But maybe it is some food for thought. What is this? 13, 14 minutes? We don't even need to say libertarian or anarchy or whatever. If you have morals, ethics, and values, and, and, and you want to be virtuous, the postponement of those things is not helpful to your current contentment or your pursuit of content, contentedness. I would suggest figuring out how in your day-to-day -day life right now that you can live in alignment with those because if you don't, you're going to be depressed and anxious, not content. And I guess that's all I'll say for today. Just something to spark your mind to think, get you thinking. So, all right, take care.